Hello, everyone. I'm Robert Kelly, the Artistic Director of Theatre Works. It's a thrill to introduce you to a brilliant stage and television star who's also been the star of many Theatre Works productions over the past 30 years. Say hello to Francis Chu. Hi, how are you guys? It's so great to see you again, Kel. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, Francis. Uh, what an amazing, amazing uh, week or week and 10 days you've just <laughs> been through. I mean, you were nominated for two Drama Desk Awards. That, that almost never happens. Uh, you just won the very prestigious uh, Lucille Lortel Award for Outstanding Featured Actor in a Play for Cambodian Rock Band. And you were also nominated by them uh, for Outstanding Leading Actor in a Musical for Soft Power. And just days before that, you won the Bay Area Theater Critics Circle Awards for Lead Actor in a Play for King of the Yees up at San Francisco Playhouse and for Featured Actor in a Play for your role at, in the Language Archive at Theater Works. Um, that's pretty amazing. That's a pretty amazing <laughs> couple of weeks for anyone in the field. And uh, I have to congratulate you. Um, this is also, I mean, just, you know, and not all that many uh, weeks or months before you finished up uh, the run of the, the show Madam Secretary on television, playing the very wise but very wary uh, Chinese Foreign Minister Chen. Uh, this has been an incredible year. But how, uh, how's it been for you the last few weeks? I, um, I'm feeling a little piggy. <laughs> I mean, great. my mother would say, don't let it get to your head. Um, you're not such a big deal. I hope it'll just keep right on rolling once we all get back into the theater again. It's, it's particularly gratifying, I think, um, uh, being acknowledged uh, in, you know, the Bay Area where I grew up and where I learned, I think, and continue to learn so much. I mean, I think that the whole idea of um, my thinking that it was even possible to take myself seriously enough to, uh, you know, um, is because of you and because of theater works and the chances that you took on me and uh, continue to take on me and your um, not just giving me opportunities, but also guiding me toward um, the, uh, a way of working and a way of respecting the work and the people working around me. Well, you've had uh, a career that spans uh, over 30 years and the uh, Theatre Works is very proud to have been part of it and to continue to be part of it. Um, it goes all the way back to 1988 which was your first show at Theatre Works. Uh, and uh, your, your work here has included uh, musicals, plays, stage readings, uh, and uh, a great stint as a choreographer for Pacific Overtures when we did it a second time. Um, it all began actually with Pacific Overtures. That was your first show here in 1988, Stephen Sondheim's historical musical about the opening of Japan in, to the West in 1853. Um, you played the lead character, Manjaro, um, and also the lion dancer. I don't know if that's been done before ever, but uh, it was just fantastic. Um, but I'm proud to say you were first Theatre Works first equity actor. Um, and uh, it was, you were also the lead of an uh, incredible uh, cast that we put together. I went into our vaults, uh, which are, you know, buried 16 feet under one of the theaters, <laughs> um, to find some very primitive VHS footage of you uh, in that show, in the very first Pacific Overtures, playing Manjaro, who's um, uh, made friends with the prefect, Kayama, it was played by David Lamb. And uh, you set off on a journey of telling each other, uh, trading haiku, incredible moment. Here it is. If you could have seen what I have seen in America. But what I feel in my heart is enough to have me boiled in oil. I think you're going to be far too useful for me to boil. <laughs> but now, I must return to Uraga. My wife has just no words for me for many days and will be very worried. <laughs> Come with me. It's a long journey. Bing. 
if we can keep each other company. anything about that uh, that role or that time when we did that wow you know um i had i had done the revival of pacific overtures in new york in 1984 and um i had taken time off of school in order to do that and um and and you know there i was surrounded by asian american actors who were all making it in the business um i had joined equity um, I worked with Steve Sondheim and John Weidman on that revival. I, 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 and still, I didn't think I was going to do this for a living. So um, part of what I think um, watching that clip evokes in me is what it was like to perform when I had a day job and so was exhausted all the time. But I was doing it because I needed to, because I loved it so much. I took it so seriously. I remember um, even though we were rehearsing in the evenings and on weekends, and it was a, this wonderful company with wi a wide range of experience. Um, and I was coming at it uh, feeling like uh, I, I had a leg up because of, of my previous experience with the show while doing it at Theater Works. I was also, I think, blown away by how fresh and new and sophisticated your approach to the show was um, and how you were encouraging us to own it, to own our own talent, our own humanity, and, and to tell our story from our perspective. And, and that was so new. I, I, I just, uh, I, I don't know that other people think about this even, um, but when I was, when I grew up, I, uh, and, and not just where theater is, is concerned, I, I think I was always aware that uh, I had to adjust my perspective to uh, fit in. And I had to adopt, uh, whether you'd call it mainstream perspective or, 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 or I don't know what else to call it, but just the awareness that it was somebody else's, that in order to be American, in order to fit in, in order to be an adult, all kinds of, in all kinds of arenas, I had to be uh, aware that I, I, when I walked into a room, I had to sell myself as fitting in wow. something else. And here I was in a show directed by you, largely choreographed by you as well, where you had complete control and yet you were telling us, be yourself, talk from your own experience. You broke a lot of uh, people's preconceptions into smithereens uh, over the years at Theater Works. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, obviously, you started in a show that was set in uh, ancient Japan or uh, 19th century Japan. And, uh, uh, but before long, and, and not very long, you were playing all these other wonderful roles, including Peter Pan in our holiday musical of that show. And I remember you flying wildly across the stage at the Lucy Stern Theater. Um, and it was the first of many roles you've played here that reflected uh, theater works very a uh, different approach to casting, um, one that's become much more common in the uh, world of theater in the last 30 years, but back then was pretty new. Uh, and you followed up uh, Peter Pan with things like uh, the MC in Cabaret, which was one of your most brilliant uh, creations. Uh, and and uh, I have to say, I loved you as Mozart uh, in uh, Amadeus. Yeah. 
but you were just fabulous in that. Uh, and most recently, uh, in, you know, in terms of things uh, somewhat uh, uh, non-traditional was uh, playing the very hilarious uh, Reston in the language archive just nine months ago in our production directed by Jeffrey Lowe. And it was uh, uh, a beautiful performance. Um, ha have, you know, have these kinds of opportunities uh, affected you as an actor, uh, playing roles that uh, many other uh, Asian actors or even actors uh, of all different uh, ethnicities and races might not normally get a chance to play? Um, when I, I get asked occasionally to talk to um, drama school students and uh, almost inevitably the, the conversation becomes about how do I know my type and how do I become my best type? How do I sell myself as that type? And I'm like, well, I don't know what you're being told here in school, <laughs> but um, we're, we're human beings. And, uh, you know, my type might be a middle-aged, bald, Asian-American guy, but that doesn't encompass what it is that I'm capable of uh, and what I, what I should get to audition for. So um, when you start asking yourself about what type you are, Think about who you are. Think about who it's possible you could be under the right circumstances. Think about, you know, the range of your humanity. Don't just think about your physical appearance or what voice type you are or, or anything like that, just, you know. So, yeah, having these opportunities that you offered me, I think, made me feel ready when other opportunities came along and taught me I think how not just to be an actor, but to consider myself as a whole human being. Well, you've uh, certainly played non-traditional roles, uh, or you've been cast non-traditionally, I think, at the theater works, but uh, you have also played some roles that all by themselves are somewhat non-traditional. <laughs> uh, uh, one of my favorites uh, that you've ever done was uh, playing the uh, Chinese opera star Song Li Ling in David Henry Huang's M. Butterfly. France is a country living in the modern era, perhaps even ahead of it. China is a nation whose soul is firmly rooted 2,000 years in the past. What I do, well, even pouring the tea for you now, it has implications. The walls and the windows say so. Even my own heart, strapped inside this western dress, even it says things. Things I don't care to hear. I was always so concerned about my voice and the way I looked. I'd have done my job better than I had a right to expect. Oh. Give him some credit, too. He's right. I was in a fix when I arrived in Paris. I walked from the airport into town, and then I located my blind groping the Chinatown district. Oh, let me make one thing clear. Whatever else may be said about the Chinese, they are stingy. <laughs> I slept in doorways for three days until I could find a tailor who would make me this kimono on credit. As it turns out, maybe I didn't even need it. Maybe he would have been happy to see me in a simple shift and mascara, but better safe than sorry. That was, that was quite something. Uh, and uh, it was amazing because you were able to come back, uh, you know, a decade later and still be every bit as gorgeous uh, as the first version and uh, hard ass as the second. And uh, it, was, uh, it was really great. Who couldn't fall in love with Mark Capri? Oh, I, Mark I mean, was just brilliant, playing you, Gallimard. Thank you so much for that. I've got to say that uh, your career sort of took a, a big turn when you left the Bay Area eventually mm. uh, to pursue your uh, work and your career in New York. And you had great success there, uh, you know, including uh, Obi winning roles off Broadway and uh, originating the role of Bun Fu in Broadway's Thoroughly Modern Millie and many, many, many other shows. And yet you've managed to find time to come back to theater works occasionally. I'm very grateful for that. And so is our audience. Um, 
among the many roles you've done uh, over the last decade, uh, you were the very demanding sushi chef in Tokyo Fish Story uh, and uh, in 2016. And one of my favorites was uh, when you played uh, David Henry Huang's uh, father, Henry, in his autobiographical play, Yellow Face. Mm. And you'd already played the role off Broadway and you'd, you'd won your first Obie Award for that show. Um, and it was a thrill to see it here at Theater Works. We've got a little video from, from that show. Uh, take a look. Dad, it's very difficult to make yourself look good before a congressional committee. What about Ali Noor? It's not impossible. What does Ali Noor have that I don't? <laughs> First, I become spokesman for Asians all around this country. Then next, who knows, maybe governor of California. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, Francis, uh, Yellowface was focused on uh, prejudice against uh, Asians in our community and, uh, and especially on the limited opportunities for Asian performers in the, in the arts, um, both in the theater uh, and in American society when you look at the, the whole picture. <clears throat> Looking at back over your career, um, what are your thoughts about the evolving presence of Asian actors in uh, the American theater? I wish that um, I had the training, the skills, and um, the confidence that uh, the next generations of Asian American writers and performers and designers and directors all seem to have. I mean, I, I'm, I'm really struck by how they don't, it's not even a question of taking up space for so many of them. They are not afraid of making the wrong choice for them as an Asian American. They're just, they're making choices. And, um, uh, and I've learned a lot from working with them in, in that sense. I, I, you know, um, as somebody of an older generation who um, wasn't even aware that I, I was apologizing for, um, being a lead or, or playing a role that um, wasn't traditionally played by an Asian person uh, or having an opinion uh, or having a question even. I, I think that uh, I've, I've learned from them that we're not gonna take up our space until we just do and stop asking for that. Well, you've always belonged at Theater Works, that's for sure. And uh, despite your ever-growing popularity in New York and around the country, uh, you've managed to find time to come back uh, occasionally to do great parts on our stage. And I, uh, I have to say, I've, I've always been thrilled. Um, you were uh, here last summer on a, to, to be in the very first show of our 50th anniversary season. Um, playing the curmudgeonly but uh, lovable Reston and several other characters, uh, including a suicidal baker and the uh, inventor of Esperanto <laughs> in, our, in a production called The Language Archive. Um, and TheaterWorks uh, audience fell in love with you all over again. Uh, so I want to share a scene. It's uh, just nine months ago, but uh, I'm sure uh, it'll bring memories back for you and also for... Uh, our audience, an amazing scene with Emily Kuroda, uh, who played uh, your wife, Alta, um, in the language archive. What do you do? Do I complain? Complain about what? Complain about your bitching oh, by cooking, huh? My cooking? Yes. Force it down my gullet, I do, because it is like sludgy. Oh, do you do not my food? I see you wait, smack it down. Because I pretend. Oh, you man, you mother. Very good. Oh, thank you, Alta. Thank you. <laughs> 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 uh, I just I want to I want to come back as Emily Corona's husband in in the next life. She's just <laughs> so brilliant. Well, to wrap up, my old friend. Uh, You've been a theater work star for three decades. I'm truly grateful for all the shows we've shared together. Uh, 
and for the opportunity to direct you in so many of them. Yeah. As you well, look Cal, back on all of this, oh, go ahead. No, that's fine. You, I, I just, I, I just can't pass up the opportunity to say that if TheatreWorks has a star, it's you. You, you know, you, and not just a theater company, uh, not just a destination, not just a, a place uh, where great work has been done. But you've changed the field. You've changed the lives of artists. You've encouraged and nurtured um, uh, a, a way of imagining uh, ourselves and, and what we can be uh, because of the spirit of TheaterWorks and its mission in, in offering not just a, ref a reflection uh, on theater or a reflection on our lives, but on uh, what is possible um, what we what we might aspire to if we only could dream that that uh, we had the luxury to dream that much, um, and so you know I, I I am so I'm just so grateful. I appreciate that, Francis. What a great pleasure this has been. I, it, you know, there's it takes a lot of great people to make a theater to make a show. Um, everyone has their uh, skills that they bring to it. And without any of them, you have nothing. Um, so it's been just a joy uh, all this time. I look forward to the next chance I get to work with you and uh, to see you at Theater Works or on Broadway or off Broadway or wherever I can get to that you're performing. I, uh, Me too. I can't wait. Thanks so much. Thank you.